Let's see how the wheel bearings are doing. Up and down looks good, left and right also good. That slack is from the steering rack. Give it a spin and it's binding a bit you can hear. And on the other side it actually slows down super quickly. And on the brake rotor there's uneven wear. So it's time to get these changed. So we've got to replace all the brake parts and of course we're going to take the opportunity to upgrade them as well. Here I have some Brembo ventilated rotors. These are from the E30 320i to 325i spec. And I have some 320i, 325i spec calipers. These were, I bought these from eBay. They were supposed to be remanufactured, but I don't see BMW markings on them. I have some new brake pads, left and right. And I have some brake fluid. These are dot four brake fluid. While we're checking the front brakes, we will also take a look at the rear drums. Give them an inspection and uh, replacement parts if necessary. But before we do any of that, I don't just want the brakes to work well, I want them to look good too. So we have these high heat caliper paint, spray paints, to turn this into this. This is going to be a three part video. In this video, I'll be painting the calipers. Next video, we'll be checking the rear drums. And lastly, we'll be installing all of it and draining the fluid. This painted caliper is just my test caliper. The texture is quite rough, but we're aiming for something real smooth. I made a lot of mistakes and learned a lot with the first caliper. So I'm going to show you how to do it right with the second caliper. Starting with the first step, surface prep. What we'll do first is to get some 200 grit sandpaper here I have 220, close enough. And we are going to wet sand the entire caliper. All the parts that are going to be painted, they need to be sanded a bit so that the surface is rough and the spray paint can grab onto it and won't peel off easily. Pretty simple process, but I found it's easier to sand the calipers thoroughly if you detach the two halves of the caliper first. Then all you need to do is give the whole caliper a good sanding while avoiding the parts that are more fragile or not going to be painted, like the rubber boots. After everything is sanded down, give it a good rinse down to get the metal dust off and then hit it with some soapy water. Make sure you cover every surface so that all the grease can be removed before you move on to painting. As a last step in cleaning, I'm going to rub down the entire caliper with some alcohol. And lastly, get a clean dry cloth and dry up the entire caliper. With the caliper completely clean, step 2 is to mask off any parts you don't want to paint. What we'll do here is to use some painter's tape or masking tape to tape off any area that we don't want the spray paint to get onto. So that would typically be the bleeder valve here. The threaded area where the brake line or brake hose threads into. Any surfaces which are bolted to another piece. Try to follow the shape of the areas you want to mask as precisely as possible. the caliper piston and the rubber boot around it. Make sure you cover the entire piston, uh, including the hollow part in the center. 
On the other half of the caliper, you'll want to mask off the rubber boots as well as the guide rail pins. As before, mask out any part that will be bolted to another part. And lastly, mask out the railing guides where the uh, brake pads will be sliding in and out. This should not be painted so that you don't affect the operation of the brake pads. Now everything is roughly masked and you have to either trim the edges of the masking tape with a knife or like me, I'm just folding it in so that the masking tape doesn't obstruct the spray paint. I tried using an, a normal blade but uh, it wasn't sharp enough so I'm just folding it. Oh, and don't forget to mask out the threads for the mounting bolts. Otherwise you'll have difficulty mounting this to the wheel hub. The prep work is all done and step 3 is to get your spray booth ready. Since I won't be spraying things very frequently, this is just a temporary setup. I've got some lengths of metal wire hanging from a towel rack. Just hang the calipers up on these wires. I recommend hanging the calipers from one of the holes for the bolts which have been masked off. The less contact the wires have with the parts you want to paint, the better. You probably want to make sure the wall is protected from the overspray. I've got a piece of tarp here. You can use some big pieces of cardboard as well. Just put it behind and around the area where you're going to be spraying. I clipped the tarp to the towel rack so that it wouldn't slip off. As the calipers were hanging quite low, I was afraid that the tarp might touch it if there were strong winds, so I adjusted the calipers to hang higher up. And lastly, I tied some weights to the tarp to try and prevent it from swinging in the wind. This was not actually good enough and I recommend that you tie it down to the floor or something a bit more secure. Um, in the strong tropical thunderstorms that we get here in Malaysia, uh, the winds can get quite strong and this will still swing and hit the caliper, ruining your paint job. I added some cardboard to the sides to protect that part of the wall from overspray. Now we can finally start spraying and the first thing to go on is the primer. Brake parts can get pretty hot, so make sure you get some high heat primer. This primer can withstand up to 350 degrees Celsius. Give it a good shake before starting the spray. Make sure you wear a mask and goggles, because you don't want the spray to get into your lungs or on your eyes. Start with a light coat, and I recommend you start with a part of the caliper that's not visible after it's installed on the car. Don't worry if the caliper is not fully covered by the first coat because we will be applying a lot of coats. But make sure that you are spraying from different angles on each coat so that you cover all the nooks and crannies. I'm not used to spray painting and I think my coats are actually too thick. You should try going a bit thinner which will let it cure better before you lay on the next coat. While waiting for the coat to dry, you can close up the paint booth so that no leaves or dust gets onto the caliper. The paint booth is extra handy if, like me, you have to 
continue painting on weekday evenings after work. After many, many thick layers of primer, I've gotten a smooth finish on some surfaces. Uh, I've been focusing on the parts that will face outside the car. So those parts that won't be seen after the brakes are installed, I've just left them pretty rough. Um, but those that will be visible, I've tried to give it a smooth finish. So you can see this part it's quite smooth, a lot smoother than the original material and on this side of the caliper also a lot smoother but not quite there yet uh, but I've been laying very thick coats so it's a little bit uneven um, and also since it's a thick coat throughout uh, so it kind of carries the bumpiness of the original surface so what I'm going to do now is I've got some 2000 grit sandpaper and I'm going to wet sand this and I'll try not to remove too much primer uh, definitely try not to expose the metal again but I'll smooth out the bumps in the primer and then let it dry and then I'll continue spraying the primer but in uh, thinner coats for even build up and hopefully then after a few more coats it will be completely smooth so the idea here is that the thick primer has built up in the valleys and the peaks of the caliper so filling up the valleys is good but the peaks will be cutting down the peaks with the sandpaper so that overall the surface is going to be much smoother Right, with this piece, you can also see I've gone down to the metal, even though I was sanding really gently. Uh, so 2000 grit wet sand and barely applying any pressure at all. You can still very easily scrape off all the primer and get to the metal. But that's what I'm after. Um, because the, these parts of the metal would be the bumps. And now I've got primer in all the crevices and so the material is hopefully smoother now so if I was to apply a few more coats of primer the end result will be much smoother so I'll hang these up again, let them dry and we'll hit it with a few more or a lot more coats of primer probably finish using up the whole rattle can now that the primer is sanded we are going to hit it again with more coats of primer to cover up the bare metal as well as build up more even surface. I'm just going to finish using the whole can. Here's the final result after priming. You can see the surface is way smoother than it started. All the valleys have been filled in and there are no sharp bumps on the surface now. I did once again lay the primer on too thickly and there are some runs on it but uh, overall still quite a good finish. There are some valleys which are really deep which I didn't manage to cover with the primer on this part of the caliper 
I think probably enamel paint might do better here. Now we're finally done with the primer and we'll move on to the color coat. I still don't know what color scheme to use in my car. So I picked this GTR copper, which is not too shouty, not too loud. This paint has a nice metallic look to it, which I didn't realize it would have when I bought it online. It's quite nice. The coverage is also really excellent. With just one coat, I've got almost complete coverage on the caliper. I think in total, I did two, maybe three coats of this color. And here's the completed color coat. And now we finally reach the last step, clear coat. The clear coat is just a transparent coating. It's meant to protect the color coat and the primer. It's supposed to be a hard transparent coating which also adds gloss to the caliper. As usual, spray on a few coats with at least 10 minutes between coats. You can see there's some. I think that's the primer showing through through the base color coat here as well, and also on this side, you see that big whopper. That's all the primer, the white primer under the color coat. Actually, the color coat's been scraped off somehow. Yeah. And this is on the part that will be visible from outside the car. So that's really disappointing. Other than that, you can see how the finish is a lot smoother than the other caliper. Um, but I think what happened is I had the brake parts, the calipers facing this way uh, as they were drying overnight. And I had my tarp pulled down to cover it. But I've got the weight on the tarp so that it doesn't try and keep it from touching the caliper and ruining the wet paint job. I think what happened is there was probably really strong winds and this was the tarp was being pushed around too much and it probably probably contacted the caliper somehow from being probably this was also like swaying around. Uh, so probably had some contact with these hard bits here and took off a bit of the color coat and clear coat uh, here as well anyway I'm all out of 
the color coat and clear coat and I really don't want to do this again so I'll just have to live with it I've already sprayed some clear over this just let it dry out before I reassemble these and put it on the car so if you followed my instructions thus far you would get something like this pretty smooth a lot smoother than the raw caliper anyways you can compare that to down here um, and here this is the first caliper I tried it with my test caliper which is on the passenger side you can see this one's surface is still very rough um, ignore the bottom for now but this is this is the finish without sufficient primer so there's not enough layers of primer to smooth out the material and this is with a lot more primer a lot smoother and I finished four cans of this GOX7 paint so that's two cans of primer one can of the color and one can of clear coat so if I was to do both calipers with really smooth finish I probably need three cans of primer uh, but the paint the paint is really soft so you can see there's some damage so I've had this drying for a day now uh, at more than 12 hours but I took it off the wire hangers and just set it on a chair so I could assemble it and these marks are just from being set on a chair for two minutes it's just it's too soft it's supposed to cure with the heat from the brakes but it hasn't been installed so there's no heat and it's still super soft so that's really disappointing so my trial piece is not perfect it's got a bit of the same damage as well and my perfect piece is also not perfect oh well I make the mistakes so hopefully you won't have to another thing I like to point out is with the test caliper I didn't hang it from wires I just laid on the on some supports on the floor and that also caused some damage to the paint stay tuned for my next video which will be inspecting the rare drum brakes and then finally we'll install these nice painted calipers onto the car and drain and refill the brake fluid